questions. So don't be shy to ask questions if you like. Just have your props nearby. We're gonna start with the uh, calf stretch on the rolled up towel or the half dome. So that's the first thing we're going to do today. So if you can, you just put me on the speaker view if you like, hopefully you can see. Now I am lucky enough to be here in the studio with a half dome, but a rolled up towel will work just fine. And I'll turn myself up a little bit. Hopefully that will help. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is just, I'll show you from the front first and then I'll move myself to the side. Let's do the right foot. So with your rolled up towel or your half dome, you're gonna place the ball of your foot on the top of the domed part, heel down on the floor. So ball of the foot relaxed on the top, heel sinking into the floor, and you stay there for a second. Don't go into the stretch yet. I just want you to get a sense of uprightness through your spine, so you're easily long, and allow your foot, your whole foot, to sink a little bit. Now remember, this is not a crazy stretch. So stepping the left foot forward just enough until you feel some lengthening, the beginning of a stretch deep in the lower calf. So this will be kind of, um, I would say more like an Achilles soleus stretch than a gastrocnemius stretch, if you know your lower leg muscles. In other words, it's a deeper to the, um, to the surface stretch. Not a superficial stretch, but deeper, closer to the bone. And you'll want to be just upright through your spine. Feel that your pelvis is level. Feel that your tail is down, crown up a little bit. I usually hold this for 60 seconds. Like I said last week, you could do this stretch for 20 minutes and it would be a valuable stretch. <laughs> Most of us need it. Now stay there. I'm just going to show you another view. Let's say I have my right foot on my towel or my dome and I have my left foot in line with it. I'm going to just line my pelvis up right on top of my, on my ankles, right on top of my ankle bones. Let's say my standing foot, my free foot is back a little bit. I'm gonna line my pelvis up over the back leg. And again, if my foot is here to feel the stretch, I'm gonna line my pelvis up over the back leg. So whichever foot is behind, if your feet are staggered, that's where you line your hip socket up over that foot. Let's go to the other side. We'll get a chance to do this each side twice. So you're gonna just go left foot on the top of the apex of the roundest part of your towel or your dome heel down, you give your body just two breath cycles to sort of settle into it. Ah, easy tall spine. And then I'm gonna take my foot and step it forward gingerly. I wanna find the beginning of the stretch. I don't wanna ram into it. And what I'm searching for is that my heel on that left foot can be sinking into the floor and there's a deep stretch. So not superficial necessarily, although if you feel it there, no big deal, but kind of deep to the bone is the muscle area we're working for. And then once you feel that you're nice and upright and square, I don't know, maybe you look down at your feet and go, oh, actually my right foot is forward a little bit, so I'll back my hips up a little bit over top of my left ankle. So whichever foot is behind, that's where you center your hips over that ankle. 60 seconds, whatever. We're going to do the other side and I'm going to layer on a second stretch while we're reading. So come off gently, move on to the right side of your towel again. So right foot, really it's the left side of the towel with the right foot. It, it's not complicated, but it is for some reason. So foot down, I'm going to step forward and allow my heel to sink into the floor, setting up the pelvis making sure I'm centered over the back heel, whichever foot is back, or maybe they're the same. Okay, here's my forearm stretches for you today. Make two fists. Some of you have done this already. Your thumbs are around your index finger, so keep your index finger tucked in there. Go fist to fist, so my fists are facing each other. I'm gonna come closer so you can see. And then you're gonna drop wrist to wrist, but you're not gonna let your index fingers pop out. So you keep your index fingers tucked in there. And Probably, if you've been working on a computer at all, or even on your smartphone for a while, this is like, ooh, relax your shoulders down, 
Good. I know I'm a headless torso at the moment. Just hang out there. Then you're going to release your fingers. Oh, there goes the stretch. Flip them to a prayer position. Keep your shoulders easy and then bring the backs of your hands together with your thumbs ideally touching. Maybe your hands have to be up here to get that. That's fine. If you can, you start bringing them down and you relax your shoulders. Yeah, perfect. Nice, Sharon. Try and get the backs of your hands to touch. So I'm thinking this section right here. As much as you can, it's a lot to ask this stretch, especially if you've never done it before. Number three, unwind your arms, put your elbows together in front of your face. I'm at 90 degrees with my arms and you're gonna keep your elbows gently touching, open your hands. So nice, easy breaths. Just 10 seconds. Try to keep your elbows in line with your uh, collarbones. Shoulders easy, opening the fingers wide. That was easily 10 seconds, Sherry. Relax your arms, relax your shoulders. Switch over to the other side on the half dome. So like I said, if it feels good for you, you could stand in this calf stretch, this half dome stretch for as long as you like. Um, here we go, heel down. Ball of the foot, nice and relaxed. Maybe you find you can go a little further on this second try. Maybe not, but don't worry about it either way. The pelvis is square and you're lined up over whichever foot is behind, if it is. Yeah, good, let's do those stretches. I'll come in closer. So fist to fist, wrist to wrist, shoulders nice and easy. Ah, beautiful, good. Stay upright through your pelvis. <laughs> don't do what I'm doing. And yeah, you look good, Sharon, that looks good. Yeah, don't uh, bend forward here. I'm just doing this right, yeah, I'll come down there. Okay, release your hands, flip your hands to prayer. Flip them again so the backs of the hands come together. Try to relax the shoulders and allow the heels of the hands or the backs of the hands, I should say, to come together and maybe working your hands down. You can even do a little side to side if you're like, ooh, what does that feel like? Maybe different, maybe not. And then you unwind, ah. Here we go, elbows together, finger, uh, pinkies together. Open the fingers, open the hands. Good, try and keep your, so just notice a couple things. One is this will happen, try and keep your elbows up. The other thing that happens is this, and try and keep your hands away from your face. It's tricky, five more seconds, four, three. Ah, and then relax your arms, relax your upper body, good. Let's take that half dome out of the way now. Goodbye, half dome, thank you for your services. That was a Marie Kondo thing right there. Thanks, half dome. <laughs> okay, so from here, lift and lower your toes. I like that, thanking everything for its service. One set of toes and then the other set of toes. So I'm just mirroring it with my hands. You don't have to do the hands, but I'm just trying to make it clear what we're doing with our feet. Okay, good. You keep going, stand nice and tall. I'm just gonna turn my fan off here so that my voice doesn't go blowing around the space. So here we go, lift and lower. Start circling your wrists at your sides. A Little bit of osteoarticular work, right? Now rebound up through your spine. You should feel really nice and tall. So the crown of your head up, the tailbone down, circle your wrist the other way, and try to combine your spine into one long unit. From your tailbone all the way up to the crown, there's one long lengthening tube. Good, bring your arms up a little bit in front of you, relax your feet and just turn your arm bones in and out, and in and out. Good, start to pedal through your feet. So you're lifting one heel and the other heel and you're in control as you lower down. Don't lose the length through your spine. Something to be aware of, just notice, are you going a lot side to side through the pelvis or could you stay right on your gravity line? Up and down, just something to be aware of. Good, different muscles working. If you stay in center, good. Bring your arms down by your sides. 10, 9, 8, 7, good, we're just easy shoulders, easy neck, still that long stretching tube of the spine. Last one, settle your feet down, turn your arms in, turn your arms out, lead from the fingertips, fingertips rippling up to the shoulders, 
fingertips rippling up to the shoulders. Allow it to start to pull the breastbone forward as you go out. Pull the breastbone back as you roll in. So it should feel pretty gentle, but there's this nice internal rotation, external rotation through all the arm bones from the wrist all the way up to the top of the shoulder. And I'll show you from the side, my upper body is starting to move as well, leading from my fingertips. My fingertips do all of the initiation and the rest of my arms, upper back, neck and head follow along. Should feel pretty nice and you only make it as big as it feels good. One more time each way. Good, and then you land in the center. Reach your right arm way up to the ceiling. Big reach, you can't see my fingertips, but reach yours to your ceiling, breathe in. Exhale, keep your fingers reaching and just side bend away from that side. Good, on your inhale, reach your left fingers up higher than your right fingertips. Exhale, down on the right side. So our up stretch, inhale, fingertips up. Exhale, just side bend right over the uh, armpit level. Good, and inhale up, and exhale. And as much effort or as little effort as feels good. Inhale up, this is your hour and your body and your Monday afternoon. Inhale up, so do the best that you can for yourself, good. Leave both arms up for a moment, stretch, pull your tailbone down, bring your fingertips to your shoulders, circle your elbows, nice tall spine as your elbows make pretty big circles. Really reaching into the edges of the circles, good. Now leave your elbows forward, stretch them forward in front of you, right elbow only, down to the waist right back to the wall behind you, up to your ceiling, to the screen. And again, two more times. Opening up that side of the shoulder girdle, feel the collarbone nice and wide, and then feel the upper back open. Now the left side, down to the waist, good, to the wall behind you, up to your ceiling, up past your ear to the front. Two more big circles, you're breathing, right? Yeah, everyone's breathing. Excellent, good, and then relax your arms down by your sides. Just start swinging them in opposition. Opposition, good, and then just pick your knees up and start marching in opposition to your arms. Excellent, good. Roll through your feet. These are little marches. We're not gonna do very many. I just want you to get into opposition for a moment. 10, nine, eight, seven, taller spine if you can. Five, four, three, two, one. March your legs a little bit wider. Good, turn your toes in. So by a little bit wider, I mean wider than your shoulders. Knees and toes turned in as much as is comfortable, hands on your pelvis, into our good old posterior anterior tilt. Posterior and anterior tilt. Do that for, let's do a few of them and then we're gonna play with something to see if we can open up those tissues a little bit more. So just notice how it feels. Hmm, feels a little tight, feels a little like, Sticky. Okay, so bring your feet back underneath you. Bring your hands to your low back. And we're going to massage the thoracolumbar fascia. So you can bring your hands in and you're going to move your pelvis around while you do that. And I'm going from all the way from the base of the ribs down to about the sacrum. So you get that whole area. Moving around, maybe you do a couple anterior posterior tilts. Maybe you circle your pelvis. Maybe you use your thumbs or your fingers or just the whole hand. Good, five more seconds of that just so that we get through that fascia. Nice movement and then relax your arms. Bring your feet out again, turning them slightly in. Hands on the pelvis and let's go back into posterior anterior tilts and see if it's 5% more free. If it is, fantastic. If it's not, leave the class. No, just kidding. I'm totally kidding. Just don't worry about it. Sometimes things work and sometimes things don't. Okay, relax your arms. I hope that wasn't, I was totally joking there, right? Okay, circle your hips. Little circle. Good. And then we'll go the other way. Circle the other way. 
Beautiful, nice differentiation between the ribs and the pelvis. And then take your figure of eight. This can be small, by the way, and if you need to bring your feet in narrower, then go ahead and do that. Okay, and then we reverse the path, figure eight the opposite way, which is a little bit of a brain tease, but once you get started, it usually works out. Good, leave your legs out. Just do a little bend and stretch the knees. Very small. Think about softening the joints to bend them. Don't tense up around the knees to bend. Don't tense the ankles, soft. Good, now leave them straight, hands on your pelvis. Tuck your tailbone under, so that posterior tilt. Find your low back moving to your back hand. Pull your tailbone down to the floor, and then bring your front hand to the top of your head and lift the crown of your head up into your hand. So there's your axial elongation. Combine your spine, one unit, all those free vertebrae, all the fixed ones at the base of the spine. Bring your arms out to the side, flat palms, external rotation. Good, you're gonna glide your ribs to one side, glide your ribs to the other side. So keep your pelvis tucked under. As you glide, soften the knees, soften the ankles, and stay in your slightly bent position. Good, you're still breathing. Whatever pace feels good, you could go a little faster, or you could go really slow and glide the lowest ribs, beautiful, over the pelvis. And a really nice differential movement for everyone between the ribs and the pelvis, which is great. We're gonna use that later for sure. Glide over to the right side here. It gets a little effortful. Right hand down, left hand overhead, elbow pointing to the ceiling. Keep your knees soft, tuck your tail, and then bend and reach. Remember, we're sort of bending over that right armpit. Little pulses. And can you think about the hip crest on the left side staying anchored down while the left elbow pulls away, the left armpit pulls away? Even your left ear lifts to the ceiling a little bit. For four, three, two, it looks easy, but it's hard, right? Come all the way up, try a glide side to side, just breathe, release it for a little bit. Good, we're gonna go over to the left now, find your posterior tilt, left hand down, right hand up. So posterior tilt, that tuck, and then a nice pulse, opening, the side ribs, lifting the right ear to the ceiling, folding over the left armpit, anchoring the right hip. How many more things can we think of that we have to do? Breathe. That's probably the most important one of them all. For four, three, make it small, two, and one. Come all the way up. Bring your feet in underneath you. Excellent. Come down onto tall kneeling, or if you don't want to kneel, you grab your step stool. We're going to do hip eldoa. So we've been working on this for the last, uh, the last two weeks, I think. We've done hip eldoas in the last two weeks. So I'm hoping that with that work, we can get a little bit deeper into the posture each time. But listen to your tissues and decide where you're going. Can we actually have the right leg out to the side? Sorry, I should specify. So right, uh, right foot up, left knee down. Yeah, right foot up, left knee down. So Tina, do you have to switch? Maybe your right foot up, left knee down? Is that? Oh, oh no, 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 I'm, I'm wrong. No, yeah, no, that's right. Okay, left knee down, right knee to the side. <laughs> oh my gosh, sometimes the mirroring breaks my brain. Okay, so here we go. We do, uh, you know, a little Saturday night fever. So you just lift and lower your pelvis and think about the right sit bone sinking towards the floor. So right sit bone, down and down and down, or whichever knee is out to the side. It's that sit bone is going down. Yeah? Okay, good. And now relax that and do your posterior anterior tilt. Tuck and untuck. Now this aldoa is for the front of the hip socket. It's a three-dimensional joint. We're gonna open the front of the hip socket. Stay in your posterior tilt, tailbone pulling down. Put your fingertips on that knee out to the side. Put your other hand on the opposite hip, like a side pocket. And then you're just gonna do a little lean towards your fingertips, 
pull back to the side pocket. So the kneecap reaches, the side pocket draws you back. Good, keep your spine longer and longer. So as you go side to side, you get taller. Watch the ribs don't push forward. One more time, kneecap, side pocket. Stay here, now grow taller. Lift your ribs away from your pelvis, that differential movement of the ribs. Lift all the toes on your front foot. Sink the arch of the foot down. Bring that knee back and bring the same side hip bone forward. So can I get my hip forward? Can I pull my knee back? Sink the arch down, lift the toes. Grow taller through your spine. Bring your right arm out in front, so the arm uh, that's the same as the knee to the side. Good, and then bring the other arm all the way up. So you're one vertical line from the standing knee to the reaching arm overhead. That's it, grow a little taller. Good, uh, Tina, I think you have to switch your arms. Everyone stay there. I think you have to switch your arms. Yes, good, yes, you've got it, good. Now everyone stay perfect. I'm just getting a closer look. Tuck the pelvis under. Think, just think, knee back, hip forward on that side leg. That's it, good. Lengthen through the back of the head. Think of the top of the throat drawing up and back. Good, nice, easy breaths. Now keep breathing. Maybe your eyes are down or maybe they're straight ahead. Imagine I have one set of fingers on your kneecap and one hand on your side hip. I want you to reach your kneecap into my fingers and reach your side pocket into my hand simultaneously. Good. So Sharon, you're good. You're looking good. I want you to look straight ahead though. So I want you to square your ribs and your pelvis. Yes, perfect. Good. Everyone breathe for three. Let the front of the hip open. Maybe there are some muscles you can let go to open the hip for two and one. Soften your arms nice and slow. Relax your legs slowly, keeping your spine tall and then switching to the second side. Good, really nicely done. Lots of good thoughtful work there. It's a lot of thinking, but we do a really good job that way of opening a very specific part of the joint. So here we go, I've got a 90 degree angle. If this position, and everyone looked good, but just so you're aware, if this position puts your pelvis in a funny twist, I want you to bring that side foot forward so that you can be square. But all of you looked good on that one. Okay, so do the sit bone dance for me. Do the John Travolta, dropping that side sit bone down. And if it feels good, don't be shy. Really play with the movement you have. And then go into tuck and untuck, posterior, anterior tilts. And as you do that, grow taller through your spine. So feel how your pelvis dangles below while your spine lengthens up. Good, now keep the tailbone tucked under, fingertips to kneecap and side pocket. Keeping the spine long, you just sort of oscillate between the two, not oscillate, but it's like a glide to the kneecap, to the side pocket to the kneecap, to the side pocket. Good, and everyone's doing a really good job of stopping right over that standing knee. Last one, come all the way up on top of the standing leg, lift the toes on the side foot, press the arch of the foot down. Press your knee backwards a little bit, hip bone forward. Toes up, arch down, knee back, hip forward. Take the long arm, bring it all the way up, towards your ear. Not that you have one long arm, one short arm. You know what I meant by that. The tall arm. Take the other arm out in front of your shoulder. Externally rotate your arms, open your palms. Now you're reaching your arms in different directions. So feel their connection to your back. One shoulder blade coming around the corner, the other one sliding up. Draw your tailbone down, draw your neck spine back. Good, knee back, hip forward on that side leg. Arch down, toes up, keep breathing. 10, nine for the last little bit, fingertips on the kneecap, hand on the side pocket, reach them into my fingers, my imaginary fingers. Kneecap away, side pocket opposite, breathe, taller spine. Tina, lean forward through your torso just a little bit. There you go for five, four, three, you got it. Two, a little longer. And then soften one arm at a time. Soften your legs, 
Relax your spine really nicely done. That was it. Good. Come down onto the mat. Let's lie down, but grab your strap. So you're going to grab your TheraBand, TheraBand belt, yoga strap, whatever you have. We're going to work on the posterior chain. And you know what? I'm just going to change my orientation a little bit so that you can see the position of the leg. So you lie down on your back and put your foot, your right foot, in the uh, in the strap. So right foot goes into the strap. Okay, here I go. Right foot into the strap. Now I'm going to lie down. You're not going to be able to see my face, but hopefully you can see my leg. Yeah. Okay, you can see my leg. Good. Stay there. Think about your spine dropping into the floor and lengthening. So you want just a nice, long, heavy spine on the floor. Gentle elongation and breath. Spine and breath are my two priorities in this stretch. Everything else is just a fancy add-on. Okay, so here I go, spine and breath. Now I'm gonna flex my right foot. So the heel of the foot stretches up. And yes, of course, you're getting a backline stretch. You move your leg to wherever you need to, to be able to sustain the stretch. So don't make it too harsh. Now, first thing we're gonna do is reach that right sit bone away. So think about reaching your right sit bone to the end of your mat, and then keep that and turn your right leg in. So the knee and the toes point in just a little bit, maybe even a degree. The sit bone reaches, the leg turns in. It's a tough combination. Adding on, I'm gonna invert my foot. So I'm shining the sole of my foot in towards my midline and I'm pulling all five toes on my right foot down towards my belly button. So here's the first position of the stretch and we stay just for about 10 more seconds. I'll cycle you through it again. Your spine is long, your breath is full and calm through the torso, sit bone reaching, thigh bone turned in, heel flexed, foot inverted, toes pulling down. Keep your right back pocket on the floor and just start to bring your right leg across your midline. Maybe only an inch, maybe two inches, but you don't lose the weight in the back of the right pocket. You reach up through the heel bone on the right foot and you reach away through your right sit bone. If you're really keeping that right hip down, you'll feel a good lateral and back stretch through the leg. Hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Bring your leg back in line with your hip socket and switch to the other side. So I'm just gonna put my left foot in the band and put my right foot down with the knee bent and the foot flat. And before I add in any of the bells and whistles, I just lengthen my spine and I breathe into my back rib cage, into my belly. Find a stretch you can sustain, flex your foot, reach your left sit bone far, far, far away. So the heel is reaching up, the sit bone is reaching to the end of your mat. Now turn your leg bone in so that femur turns inwards. Then invert your left foot so the sole of the foot shines towards your midline and you pull all your toes down to your belly button. Position number one, check in on your spine that you didn't arc up through your neck, that your ribs didn't pop up, everything is long, you're breathing, the sit bone is reaching, the leg bone is turned in, foot flexed and inverted, toes pulling down. Maintain everything and just carry your left leg across your midline, very gently and it's small because your left back pocket stays nice and heavy on the floor. If you want to be really, really precise, think about the left side of your sacrum having lots of weight. And reach your sit bone away. Reach up through that outside ankle bone. You can look at your lateral outside ankle bone and try and reach it up to the ceiling while you stretch your sit bone long. And then let's just bring the leg slowly back in line with the hip. Release the foot one more time each side. So the right foot goes into the band. I'm gonna talk you through while I watch this time. 
Good, so right foot into the band, back is nice and long, breath is calm. Once you're feeling all set up with the breath and the spine, you can flex your foot, draw your toes down towards you, being gentle, it's that these are all degrees, right? Find your degree of movement. Turn your leg in and simultaneously reach your sit bone long. Two very difficult things to combine, but try your best. Reach the sit bone, turn the leg in, invert the foot. Maybe you'll feel a stretch on the peroneus, which is that muscle on the outside of the, of the uh, calf. Breathe. Find something about this that you can enjoy. <laughs> if you're not already, try and find something delightful. And then keep it all and cross your midline. Gently cross the midline. Keep that sit bone stretching further and further down to the bottom of your mat. Think about the outside ankle bone stretching upwards into space while your back pocket sinks into the floor. Everyone looks really good. If you can include your toes, do that. Drawing them down exactly. Three, two, and one. Bring it back in line with the hip socket first. Ease out of it and switch to the second side. Nice work, everyone. So this whole posterior chain that we work with so much in Eldoa, here it is. And you know what, Janice? If you want that second leg out long, you're welcome to do that. There's, it doesn't have to be bent. Yeah, exactly. Perfectly fine. So see if you can reach your sit bone nice and long on that left leg. Let your spine really stretch out underneath you. Let your breath fill your torso. So don't hold your belly in. Flexing the foot, turning the thigh bone inward. That's it. Nice, Nancy. Keep that sit bone reaching. Really nicely done. Draw the foot into inversion. So shine the sole of the foot in. Good. And then when you're ready, breathing and starting to bring the leg slightly across the midline. Keeping everything, the sit bone reaching long, the thigh bone spiraled in, foot flexed, inverted, toes pulling down. Oh, and also enjoying it, something enjoyable. I don't know. <laughs> Easy breath. Maybe you're just enjoying lying on your back. Good. And then bring your leg back in line with your hip socket. Relax your foot. Relax your spine. Put the band away. Just move it off to the side. <clears throat> Stay there and breathe legs long or knees back. Whatever is the most comfortable position for you. Excellent. I'd like to move into kind of a regressed and slower version of what we call the general Eldoa. It's the one Eldoa that's a moving Eldoa, which is kind of interesting and that's why I love it. So here's what we're gonna do. Draw your right knee into your chest and keep your left leg nice and long, okay? Now the spine is an Eldoa, so you are in axial elongation. You're in a bit of a posterior tilt, which is easy when you're hugging your leg in. Your eyes are down and your chin is a little tucked. Now, if you have tension, there's too much tension in the forehead and the dura major, you're gonna keep your eyes to the ceiling or close them. So whatever works best for you. Can you from here, hug that knee in, but reach the right sit bone long? So nothing too crazy yet. I'm just hugging my right knee in, lengthening my spine. My low back is as close to the floor and as long as it can go. And my right sit bone is reaching. Now, flex your left foot and slightly turn the leg in. So the left leg is internally rotated. The foot is reaching, heel reaching away. You're gonna keep holding your right knee with your left hand. So your right arm is free to go overhead in external rotation with a flat palm. So my eyes are down, long neck, eyes are down if you, if you like, long neck no matter what, long spine, reach through the left heel, Reach through the right palm and stay there and breathe. Also lengthen your right sit bone to the bottom of your mat. Good, your fingertips should be pointing to the side. So many things. Now stay there with the arm, the spine, and the right sit bone. Keep all of that. Take a breath in. On your exhale, your long left leg goes all the way up to the ceiling until your heel goes to face the ceiling. Good. Pause there, everybody. Pause. Reach your right arm more. Reach your left heel up more. Lengthen your spine and then fold that knee in. Give it a nice hug. Switch your hands to your left knee. Hug your left knee. 
Let your right leg go out nice and long. Perfect. Let's wash, friends, repeat. I love it when cats start crawling all over people while they're doing elbow up. Okay, here we go. Hugging the left knee in. Reach your left sit bone away from you. Flex your right foot. Turn your right leg in. Oh, sorry, it's the left, right? What am I doing? Hugging the right leg. Uh, left leg is long. Is that right? What are you on? Are you hugging your left leg? Is that right? Yes? Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so hugging the left leg, <laughs> right leg nice and long. Turn the right leg in. Reach through the heel. Reach the left sit bone long too. Good. Okay. Now hold on to that left knee with the right hand and bring the left arm overhead. External rotation, flat palm. Yes, that's it, Sharon. You got it. That's the position. Good. And bring that arm, Arna, if you can, right by your ear, all the way back by your ear. Good. Now, everybody, reach your left palm and your right heel away from each other. Flatten the low back. Keep it long. Let the spine be nice and long. Keep the sit bone long. Yes, now you can go ahead. Exhale that right leg all the way up to the ceiling. Press the ceiling away through your heel, but reach the uh, left arm more and then fold all the way in. Good. Okay, put your legs down. Stretch your legs out nice and long. Take a second there. I'm going to take you through the whole thing. If you know general Eldoa and you know the inversion, eversion of the feet, do it. If you don't know it, just keep your feet flexed and don't worry too much. It'll come with time. We've got lots of time. So how do we start? We draw our legs in. You hold on to the opposite knee with each hand. So right hand to left knee, left hand to right knee. Good. Lengthen your spine. Long exhale elongation. Rib cage down. Low back down. Eyes nice and soft. Long neck. Now we're going to take the right arm and bring it overhead and back. Right arm first. Pressing the palm way overhead. Bicep by the ear. Take the left leg down and long on the mat. Flex the foot. Reach through the heel. Keep your spine getting longer and longer. On your next exhale, let your left leg travel all the way up, the longest path up to the ceiling. Press the ceiling away, and then fold the left knee and the right hand back in. Sneak your left arm out and bring it back by your ear, reaching overhead. Let your right leg slide down along the mat to a straight line. Keep the left sit bone long. Reach through the right heel. Reach through the left hand, breathe in. Exhale the low back down as the right leg goes up to the ceiling, reach that left arm too. And then fold the right leg in, the left arm. Sneak the right arm out and bring it past the ear, reach overhead as the left leg goes down, flexing the left foot. Right sit bone long, left heel reaches, right arm reaches, exhale. The leg all the way up as the low back sinks. Fold that left knee in, right hand in. Sneak the left arm back by your ear. Reach it as you lower your right foot to the floor, reaching long through the right leg. Flex the right foot. Reach the long limbs away. Exhale, bring the right leg up. Sink the low back into the floor. Fold the right knee in. Hold the arm in one more time each side, right arm overhead, and then the left leg down. Reaching the long limbs away, maintaining your axial elongation. Exhale, the long leg up, 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 up to the ceiling. Fold the arm and the leg in. Sneak the left arm back by your ear. Reach your arm, slide your right leg down to long, flex the foot. Reach the arm and the leg further and further away. Keep the sit bone on the left side long. Exhale the right leg up to the ceiling, breathing longer spine. Fold everything in. Release your feet down to the floor. Release your spine and your eyes. Legs can go straight. Arms just relax at your sides and you take a couple nice easy breaths. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Excellent work that really gets our cerebral spinal fluid moving. So take a couple of seconds. It's also a good immune boosting exercise. So even though it feels like you're just trying to think about a thousand things happening at once, there's lots of other good things happening. 
Good. Keep your body relaxed and just float your arms up over your chest for me here. So no big effort, but just arms over the chest, palms facing each other for a moment. I want you to breathe into your chest and I want you to feel as you breathe in how your lungs expand in all directions, up, front, back, down, sides, and exhale out. Keep your arms there, breathing in. Know that the tops of your lungs even expand up underneath your collarbones and you allow that movement to happen. Let's add in on your exhale, you're gonna sink your breastbone right down and away from your chin. So you're gonna use your exhale to really soften the front of the chest, soften the front of the sternum. And then you inhale, you fill everything back up again. And then you exhale, soften the front of the sternum. Adding on another thing, inhale, reach your fingertips straight up to your ceiling, try and touch your ceiling. Keep them there as you exhale your sternum down and away from your chin. Good, do that again. Inhale, fingertips, reach, 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 reach. And keep them there as you exhale, sternum down, soft breastbone. Good, keep your arms there. Bring your legs in, knees in over your torso. So I'm gonna fold my legs in. I'm going to flex my feet and bring them slightly higher than my knees. And that position should move your weight towards the top of your sacrum. So the low back is really heavy. That's right. Now externally rotate your arms and flatten your palms. So your thumb tips point out, pinky tips point in, palms are flat to your ceiling, eyes are closed or looking down over your cheekbones. Lengthen your spine underneath you. Inhale, push your arms up against the ceiling. Exhale, sink your breastbone down and away from your chin. And again, inhale, the arms press up. And exhale, keep the arms up as the sternum drifts down away from your arms. Keep going, that's the whole thing. I'm right, gonna bring your arms closer to your knees, so more straight up, yes, that's it. Yeah, more, more um, perpendicular to the floor. Perpen yes, that's it. Good. Good. Yes, yeah, Sharon. Stay with it, but just put your feet down and keep your low back flat. You got it. Good. You got it, Nancy. Arms straight up to the ceiling. That's it. Flatten your palms. Turn your fingers out. That's it. Ten more seconds, everyone. This is C4-5. Let the very middle of your neck spine yawn open. Be gentle. Exhale the sternum down, but keep the arms up. Don't let your arms fall with your sternum. One more time. Breathe in, push up. Exhale, sternum down, arms keep going up. That's better. Soften one arm at a time. Good. Keep your spine and your eyes. Soften your legs down one at a time. Release your spine. Once your legs are down, release your eyes last. Legs can go to straight or bent, whatever feels good. And you're resting. Just easy breaths. C4-5, we're gonna move to C5-6 next. So just to show you, if you are curious about the angle of the arms, it's a tricky one to find. Instead of being straight up at the ceiling with where we were with C4-5, you're gonna be halfway back, 45 degrees. So if you wanna just practice that, maybe just put your arms in that position for me. So it's, uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry Miriam, they're here, halfway back, okay? So that's C5-6 that we're moving to next. Pause there with your arms in that angle and I'll just let you know how they look. So you look down over your cheekbones or close your eyes, lengthen your spine. Looks good, Jennifer, bring your arms up just a little bit more, like an inch. Yes, that's it, good, good, Sharon, right about there at that angle. Good, Janice, that looks good. Tina, you look good. Nancy, arms a little higher, two inches higher, uh, like to the ceiling higher. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Arna looks good. Miriam, I think just a touch higher with your right hand, right arm. Yeah, good, yeah, that's it, good. Okay, everyone, relax your arms. Muscle memory will kick in here. Bend your knees, put your feet flat. Good, take a couple of breaths. Work on sinking your low back down into the floor, a little posterior tilt. Let the back of the ribs drop into the floor. Let the upper ribs sink down towards the floor. Now you can either keep your feet down here or you can fold your legs in over your torso with your feet gently flexed higher than your knees. 
So no, no pressure to bring the feet up. Bring your arms up over your chest. You, there is pressure to do that. We all do that. Okay, good. Externally rotate your arms, flatten your palms. External rotation and palms flat. So uh, rotate the other way, Sharon. Fingertips point to your knees. Yeah. And bend your wrist. Yes, you got it. Good. Okay. Now remember that angle, C5-6. Slowly move your arms back to C5-6. That's it. Good. As your arms move back, be careful. The ribs might want to lift. Exhale those low ribs right down into the floor. Keep the strong posterior tilt. Now, if you externally rotate your arms more, your fingertips might point to the ceiling. That could be okay. Bend your wrist backwards though. Keep the extended wrists. Good, open your fingers. You want your fingers to have space, radiate them out, that's good. Now lengthen the back of the neck gently. Eyes are either down over the cheekbones or they're closed. Globally lengthen your spine, the entire thing for 10. Nine, reach your arms more. Allow your shoulder blades to glide with you while you reach for five. Nice, beautiful reach. Three, everybody looks good. Two, one more breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Reach another millimeter away, sink the rib cage down, and then soften one arm at a time, but maintain your spine. Always coming out slowly with breath. One foot at a time comes down if your feet are up. Release your spine bottom to top so your eyes drift back up to the ceiling last. Good, okay, so before you rock side to side, just because we don't want any rotation in the spine quite yet, instead of that, put your feet really wide, wider than your mat, put your arms out to a T. Keep your lower spine still and let your knees drift side to side. So they won't go all the way to the floor, but it's just a better uh, hip release then rolling so that your pelvis twists. Every time you rotate, your intervertebral discs compress. Not necessarily a bad thing. They're engineered to do that. They're like fantastic little awesome sponge, spongy things. But in Aldoa, because the goal is to continue opening those spaces, we avoid rotation in the spine until everything's all done, said and done. Okay. Uh, let me think here. You rest for a second. Take 20 seconds. I'm going to try and remember what we were going to do next. <laughs> I think we're rolling onto our side and coming up to a seated position. So rolling over without too much twistiness in the spine and then bring yourself up to a seated position. Good. Really great. Okay. Moving right into the center of the spine. And this is one that I do in almost every class. It's kind of rare that I don't do this one in a class, usually just for time constraints. You're seated in a cross-legged position, right? So if you need to be up on a cushion, absolutely, that's perfect. Have your hands on your knees and just take a couple of breaths before we were breathing up here at the sternum. Now go a little bit lower, like if you could pinpoint right between the tips of the shoulder blades. I want you to breathe into that band right there, kind of nipple line area, maybe a touch lower or maybe a touch higher, depending, I don't know. So we're going kind of lower sternum, big breaths into that area. And then that same level of the spine is gonna to start to rotate. So a little circle around the sit bones and you're gonna keep both sit bones down. So you're anchored, sit bones are anchored. Good, and then we're gonna go the opposite direction. Around in a circle, the opposite direction. That same level of the spine is initiating this orbit around your pelvis. Good, and then land right in the center. Good, from here, pull your tailbone down and that should flatten your low back a little bit. Put your hand on your front ribs, the ones that like to pop out, and exhale those ribs down and back. So you're gonna feel a little bit of a ah, deflate those ribs in. Take the other hand, bring it to the top of your head and allow the crown of your head to float up. And just notice if your ribs wanna move forward in order for you to get more height. Try to keep the ribs in place and use the back of the body to lengthen. Good, stay here and breathe. Keep the ribs down. I'm just coming in closer to show you. You're gonna move your hands from your body to in front of your throat with your fingertips and your thumb tips together, palms apart. Good, 
Imagine your hands are still there on your ribs, on the crown of your head. Bring your arms up a little higher to the level of your forehead. Elbows wide. Good. I'm seeing some yawning. That's actually really great. Going into parasympathetic mode is good. Draw your head back. Draw your tailbone down. Grow a little taller. Now lift your arms a little higher. Your elbows will straighten. Good, stay there, grow taller, draw the ribs back, draw the tailbone down, bring the crown of the head up, straighten your arms even more and more and more. As the elbows straighten more, breathe into that space between the tips of the shoulder blades. Even more, widen between the shoulder blades. Flatten and lengthen the spine, press the knees out and down. You're more than halfway through. The straighter your elbows, the better. Draw your arms back now towards your ears. Don't bring your head forward, just bring your arms back. Nice, Arna, that's it. And then adjust your ribs as needed. So if by bringing your arms back, the ribs flare forward, ease them back, sink the knees, reach the crown of the head up, eyes are closed or down, and you have 10 more seconds. If you have the room as you breathe in your body, bring your palms lightly together, very lightly together. Breathe between the shoulder blades, three more seconds. And two, the spine is so flat and so long, the knees are heavy. Soften one arm as you breathe. Soften the second arm. Your legs release their tension. Your spine releases tension. Good, and you just rest. Release your legs. And similar to when you're lying on your back, you can recline, set your feet really wide, and just drift your knees one way and then the other way. Good, that's it. One way and the other way. And this, and just, you know, just as a, I don't know, it's a tip. If your legs are closer, it'll be harder for your pelvis not to move. If your legs are wider, your pelvis will be able to stay a little bit more centered, I find. I'm sure there's an exception to that rule, but that's just the thing. Okay. From here, are you ready? We're gonna go into uh, L12. Bring your legs out about shoulder distance and walk on your sit bones. You may very well want a cushion for this one if your hip flexors are screamy. So feel free. Good. Now land equally on both sit bones, flex one foot and point the other, and then swap. Flex and, and flex. <laughs> Good, excellent. And then take your legs, keep them both flexed, do one internal, one external, and then swap. Good. You can have your hands down by your sides, by the way, if you want a little bit of support. Good. And now take both legs and turn them in. And take both legs and turn them out. Both legs, turn them in. And both legs, turn them out. Now turn both legs in, flex your feet, pull your toes up towards you. Have a look and make sure you aren't uneven. You've got even space. Your pubic bone, sternum, nose are right centered in the middle. Perfect. Bring your arms out for me. Reach towards the screen. Spread your fingers. Externally rotate your arm bones. Flatten your palms. Now, if you gently reach through the heels of your hands, you should feel your mid-back engaged. Wide. Pull your tailbone down. Draw your low back back. Remember your front ribs. Ease those down. Draw the back of your head back. You're like a rag doll through the low body, heavy pelvis, reaching the heels away. When you're ready, inhale your arms up towards your ears. Stay long through your spine. Open your arms a little wider than your shoulders. Perfect. Externally rotate them another 10 degrees. Reach through the heels of the hands. Reach equally through the heels of the feet. Let's lead this distally. Reach your hands more, reach your feet more, and let your spine lengthen in between. Let your torso lengthen. Pull your toes up towards your belly button. Reach your hands another millimeter. Reach your feet away from you another millimeter. Grow taller another millimeter. Tail down, crown up. I know it's a rough one, but you can stay for 10 more seconds, right? Especially if you breathe. Slow, calm breaths. Uh, Nancy, bring your arms a little closer just to touch. Yeah, perfect for five and four. Reach from there. Everyone looks great. Three, two, lift out of your low back. Lift your ribs off your pelvis for the last breath. 
and then one arm at a time. Well done. That was an endurance one. Relax your legs, relax your spine, and you can go back to this for a moment if you like. Ah, we'll catch our breath. We're gonna move to the wall for L5S1. So I'm gonna stay right here. You go ahead and move yourself to wherever you need to put your legs up the wall. So this is the one where your pelvis is as close to the wall as it will go and your legs are straight up. Really nice work, everybody. And a nice tour of the body today. Hopefully the hot weather is aiding all of this fascial reorganization. <laughs> good, okay. So let's see, that looks good, yep. Even if I can see like your legs or your torso, I mean, if I can see your entire body, that's a bonus. But if, if I can see part of your body, that's great. Do a little self check. You look good, Jennifer. I can see your torso and part of your legs, so that's okay. Um, if you do a self check to just make sure your nose and sternum and pubic bones are lined up, you're not sort of, you know, shifted or side bent in any way. Both sit bones should be right up against the wall if possible. If that's too much for your hamstrings, back off a little bit, but we do kind of want the sit bones right in there. Yeah, good. Okay, from here, hands on the low belly, take a couple of breaths. We're gonna set our spines up and then again, work distally through the feet and through the hands. So easy breaths in through the nose, maybe out through the nose as well or out through the mouth. So you decide, feel the belly rise and fall and you wanna maintain that. You don't wanna lose the belly breath. Abdominals stay soft in all the eldoas. All right, keep the legs reaching and reach them even more as you sink your low back towards the floor. So you're gonna create a small posterior tilt. Small posterior tilt, good. Bring one hand to your front ribs, the ones that like to pop out, and bring the other hand to your sternum or your breastbone. You're gonna use your breath, inhale, feel how your hands rise with your body, Exhale, sink those low ribs to the floor, slide the breastbone away from the chin. Inhale, let your hands rise with your body. Exhale, slide the breastbone down towards the low back, sink the ribs. One more breath like that. Add a little nod to the chin so that your neck spine is lengthening underneath you. Good, now think elongation. Crown of the head reaches and tailbone reaches. They move apart from one another. Bring your arms up over your chest with your palms facing each other. Leave your arms floating up over your chest. Flex your feet. Heels reach up. Invert your feet. Shine the soles of your feet into each other. Internally rotate your thigh bones. Good. Can your pinky toes draw down towards the floor just as much as your big toes draw down towards your belly button? That's it. Good. Externally rotate your arms and flatten your palms. Don't lose any of the tension in your legs as you set up your arms. Don't lose any of the tension in your spine as your arms travel back towards your ears, nice and slow. Moving the arms back towards the ears. Yes, you got it. Now we're gonna think distally. Your hands are gonna stretch away from you. Maybe your shoulder blades will glide up a little bit along your back, that's okay. Then keep your hands reaching away and let your feet reach up to your ceiling. They draw your legs up and they sink your pelvis into the floor more. Remember the ribs sinking, the sternum sliding down towards the low back. Keep reaching the hands away reaching the feet away and letting the whole torso sink into the floor and lengthen underneath you, that long spine. Two more breath cycles like that, reaching the arms and the legs on your inhale, letting your spine lengthen, sinking the pelvis into the floor on your exhale. A couple inches below the belly button, that spot sinks the heaviest as your arms and your legs reach. One more breath, everybody, and then you're all done. Coming out of it, slowly keeping the spine and the eyes for last. So one limb at a time comes out, and then the spine releases, 
and the eyes release last and then you just stay. So just rest. At this point in time, as you come out of it, all of the tension drains away. Your breath is just back to calm, easy breath, no modifications necessary, no manipulation. Your bones are nice and heavy, sinking into the floor. Take a few more breaths there. Good. Now, just a friendly reminder to rehydrate and keep hydrated, right, as the, <laughs> as the week gets hotter. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be here for a few minutes, um, but otherwise, thank you for coming. Really nice work.